Um, it's helpful to have a model. Remember, we had laws which state what happens, but models try to explain why, and they're helpful because they, they help predict what's going to happen. So the model that we have for understanding behavior of gases is called the kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic meaning motion, mo molecular meaning molecules. And so it explains gases in terms of the movements of the particles of the gas. And it helps predict the proper behavior for, for gases under many conditions. Many, but not all. It doesn't work for all situations. But, you know, this is a general chemistry class, so we're only going to talk about the situations in which it does work. Isn't that nice? We can just simplify life. So here's an overview of kinetic molecular theory. So there's, there's four basic ideas here. One is that gases are a collection of particles in constant motion. So gas particles are moving. They're moving all the time. They're never still. A little bit like Andrew. Um, the second, my Andrew, you do know how to still, sit still. Um, the second idea is that there are no attractions or repulsions between particles, and the collisions are like billiard ball collisions. We call those elastic collisions, where there's no loss of energy. Now, of course, in a billiard ball, there's a, a little bit of a loss of energy. But if you roll two lumps of clay at each other, they don't bounce off of each other. They just kind of go home and they stop because they're flexible and they just absorb the force, they absorb the energy, and they don't transfer it. Billiard balls, you roll one into the other, the one stops and the other goes almost at the same speed that the first one did. It's an elastic collision. So these gas molecules are moving, and of course they're going to run into each other occasionally. When they run into each other, they just bounce off. There's no attraction between them, but there's also no repulsion between them, and they just keep going. Uh, the third idea is that there is a lot of space between the particles compared to the size of the particles themselves. In fact, we sometimes say that the size of the particles is negligible compared to the volume that the gas itself takes up. So there's just a lot of empty space between these particles. <coughs> And the last idea is that the speed of the particles increases with increasing temperature. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one-half mass times the velocity squared. So the mass of the particles is not going to be changing. If we increase the speed of the particles, then their kinetic energy increases. Kinetic energy is related to temperature. So a warmer gas, the particles are moving faster. A colder gas, the particles are moving slower. I think we talked about that earlier, and I gave the analogy of barefoot people on the beach. So if the sand is cold, you can walk barefoot and you just stroll along. If the sand is really hot, like it gets here in the middle of the summer, you're not going to stroll along. You're going to run quickly to the water, okay, because you're going to burn your feet. So things that are warmer move faster. So that's a very important idea. And this kinetic molecular theory is consistent with the properties of gases. We talked about these way back in the beginning of the semester when we talked about solids, liquids, and gases. Gases are compressible. You can take a gas and you can squish it into a smaller volume. Gases assume the shape and volume of their containers. And gases have very low densities compared to liquids and solids. And so the kinetic theory um, helps us to understand those properties. So gases are compressible. Here we've got two pictures, two illustrations. On the left is um, gases. Here's a gas in a cylinder. And if we push down on this um, piston, we can squish the gas particles closer together because there's a whole bunch of empty space in between them. So you can squeeze it together and make the particles be closer together. You can't do that with a liquid. Pressed on the wrong thing. OK, there we go, recovery. So here's the liquid. The liquid particles are already touchingly close. They're already in contact with each other. And so you can put pressure on them, but they're not, they can't squeeze together anymore. And so you can put all the pressure you want, 
and nothing's going to happen until you put too much pressure on and you burst whatever container you have. It's a good thing that liquids are not compressible. Hydraulic systems are based on this. You can have a long flexible tube and if you put pressure on one end, the pressure is transferred by the liquid to the other end and that's how the brakes in your car work. That's how elevators work and all kinds of things. You've got this hydraulic fluid, it's a liquid, and you have it in a sealed thing and you put pressure on one end and it transfers the pressure to the other end. You can't do that with gases. And that's why if you get air in your brake lines, then your brakes don't work very well. Because they get spongy. Yeah, you put your foot on the brakes and the brake pedal moves, but nothing happens for a while. Because there's gas in your liquid and the gas can compress. And so the gas compresses and it doesn't apply that force to the other end where you need your brakes to go on. Gases are um, compressible. Gases assume the shape of their container. So we've got these particles and they're moving and they're not interacting with each other. So there's no reason for them to stick together. Liquid molecules mm -hmm are attracted to each other, and that's why they stay together in the bottom of the container. But these gas molecules, they're just zinging along. They remind me a little of a three-dimensional Pong game. Have you at least heard of that ancient, ancient first video game, Pong, where you had the, uh, the little blip on the screen, and it, you hit it with your little paddle, and it would go off, and it would bounce off, and it would come back down, you had to keep hitting it and keep it going. And occasionally you could get it locked in a position where it would just go all by itself. That's what gas particles do. They're like little pong blips going around the room. They travel in a straight line until they run into something. When they run into something, they bounce off. If they hit another particle, gas particle, they bounce off. They change direction. If they hit the wall, they bounce off but they just keep going. And so there's nothing to keep them in the bottom of the container. They're going to eventually fill the entire container. They take on the shape and the volume of the container. Any questions? Gases have low densities because there's so much space between the particles. Solids and liquids, the particles are touchingly close. There's really no empty space. We, we sometimes have <coughs> excuse me, a difference in density between solids and liquids, but it's very small because it just has to do with how they're ordered together. Gases, though, have a lot of empty space, and so their densities are much less. So here's um, an example from your book. If you took one can of soda, this guy must really like orange soda because here's these, this is orange soda again. Did you know that some orange soda has caffeine in it? Yeah, I love it when they have that at school, on a school night for the pizza night or something, and then your kids get all wired and they can't sleep. What are they thinking? Anyway, my mother-in-law bought that for a while, too. So anyway, a can of orange soda. If you take that liquid in there and convert it to gas, one can of soda become, would become 1,700 cans of soda in the gas state. Now, that's not a picture of 1,700 soda cans. <laughs> you could count them. It's, it's not. I'll just tell you. That's a big difference in volume. So the gas is 1,700 times larger in volume than the liquid. Is the mass different? No. No, the mass is not different because the difference between the solid, I'm sorry, the gas and the liquid is just how far apart the particles are. They still weigh the same. So density is mass over volume. The mass is the same. The volume is really different, so the densities are going to be very different. 